Hello, everybody. It's been a hot minute since we've gone live here on our Facebook page. Um, and for those of you who are in our Magnetic Soul group, it's been a hot minute since we went live there, too. So I'm just going to set up my camera here for today. Let's hope that it stays. Um, I'm inside my, car, my rental car, actually, my loaner car, if you will. My car is being fixed. They gave me this beautiful vehicle to kind of hang out in <laughs> until mine's done. So um, I popped in a little early today. I know I'm early. I said 1 o'clock, but um, I just remembered I have somewhere to go. So I wanted to come in and talk about this idea of manifesting things that you think you can't have. And I'm going to share an experience with you. So a lot of the time what I find is that when you're creating something or when you're manifesting something, there's always a little voice in the back of your head that tells you, no, 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 you can't have it. And sometimes what happens is they're false beliefs, right? And um, beliefs that are made up or, or given to you by other people or just a thought that you really feel like it's just never going to happen. And then there are things that are rooted in trauma. Um, so they're belief systems that are rooted in trauma. Sometimes they're conscious, sometimes they're unconscious. Um, and be based on that experience, which is real, right? Based on that experience, we think that we can have things that we desire, that we can't manifest, you know, really big things that seem unfathomable because of those situations or experiences and that really kind of um, goes across the board for everyone um, everybody has some type of experience or belief system that says you know that's great for her but not for me and then we just kind of block off our flow to creating things and I just wanted to, to jump in here and tell you a couple of things and one that I actually just learned myself this year um, I talked a lot about this somewhere else, and I don't remember where, but um, to kind of wrap that in a in a casing for you, I want to talk about my um, my son's cat. <laughs> so you have to understand that I am a complete and total animal person. I love animals. I love cats and I love dogs but cats especially, and I've always wanted a cat, and when I was like eight or nine years old, there was a woman down the block who found a stray litter, and she gave my mom a cat, and we took it home, and I loved that cat so much. I played with it for hours, petting it and loving on it, I mean, I was like totally bonded with this cat. And I went upstairs um, to, you know, show my parents like the, thing, the greatest new thing that the cat can do. And I was rubbing my eyes <laughs> and my nose was running. And, you know, they were really red. So you can could, you could imagine that I show up, you know, in front of my parents and my eyes are like swollen, practically swollen shut. <laughs> and my mom goes, uh oh. <laughs> and my dad, who's a who is a physician, he was like, "Yeah, she's allergic." allergies i would have kept the cat and just sneezed and had allergies the entire time and um oh it was such a it was a moment and i remember that distinctly distinctly because it was the moment in time that number one was traumatic right and number two 
cemented in the idea and the belief system that I could never own a, a cat. You'll never be able to own a cat. You have allergies. So that's what I call the point of creation. That's the point of creation where we run into these experiences and we tell ourselves that, okay, this can't happen because this happened, right? And I had childhood trauma around it. So I go through the rest of my life, basically, you know, I can't be near a cat. I can't touch a cat. If I touch a cat and I rub my eyes, my eyes swell. I get asthma. I have asthma attacks in which I have to go to the emergency room for. Um, you know, I have to have allergy medicine. If I, if I go anywhere and there's a cat, I can't be in the house for more than an hour. This was my life going forward and if you had a cat in your house or even two and I walked in through your front door I could tell you had a cat within 30 seconds and it wasn't due to smell or odor or cat hair being around it was flat out my lungs would shut down and they would all constrict it's like, eh, eh. I could tell you had a cat And the same thing started happening with dogs. And here's the funny thing. I actually lived with dogs for a really long time, like most of my life until I went to college. So from the moment I was small till I was about 20 years old, I lived with dogs and I didn't have any problems. But when I went away to college and then I came home, I became desensitized um, to the hair in, in my, in my home. And so I didn't be desensitized. It was kind of like I went away and I wasn't sensitized anymore. So when I came back, it was the same thing all over. It was allergies. It was asthma. It was, I can't breathe. I can't, you know, do anything because of these pets, (laughs) because people had pets. Hello. Hello. Come in and say hi. Um, so I had allergies definitely to cats to dogs if I pet dogs and wipe my face forget it I had the whole shebang I had the asthma I had the chest constriction I had the nose runningness and I had trips to the ER (laughs) like trips to the ER I remember one time I was at a a Christmas function with my mother-in-law and the woman whose place that we were at owned a cat now she didn't have the cat um you know running around the room it was upstairs locked in a room it didn't matter for me it didn't matter I walked in the house and realized oh my god there's a cat here and I would look at my watch and be like I've got one hour (laughs) one hour before the eyes start the nose starts the sneezing starts the chest congestion uh congestion and the asthma And if I stay for more than an hour, forget it. I was just drive me to the ER (laughs) because I would need uh, a nebulizer treatment, steroids afterwards, prednisone for days. I mean, it was terrible. And this is how I lived from the moment of that point of trauma when I was eight, where I had that heartbreaking um, scenario happen. And, And I forgot to tell you this part about that when I was eight or nine. My mom just didn't just pick up the cat and walk it back to the neighbor down the street. No, she picked up the cat, walked it, walked it down the street. And I got on, you know what it was? I was, I was on a tricycle. So I must've been five or six. I might be lying about the time. Might not be eight. It must've been like five or six. I was still riding a tricycle. I got on my tricycle and chased her down the block to the dead end, which was like probably, you know, 10 houses on my tricycle screaming crying just total meltdown and followed her down to the cul-de-sac where she gave the cat back and then she had to carry me home in one arm walking me up the street and holding my tricycle in the other so we're talking about like childhood trauma right 
we're, but we're not talking about like big T trauma. This is little T trauma. It's actually like medium T trauma. I mean, cause I was so impacted by it, right? Because <sighs> I wanted this cat so badly and literally it was taken from me and I rode my bicycle to try and save it and it didn't happen. It was oh, you know, all these feelings. It was so devastating. Like when you're five, when you're six and you bond to an animal and then somebody takes it away from you. I mean, that's devastating. And that's what had happened. Um, so fast forward, we're back into my 20s and I spent, so I'm like in my 50s. So it was like 40, 30, 20, 2, 4. So it was like 30 years. No, that can't be right. 20s, 30s, 40s. Oh, wow. Almost 30 years, you guys. Wow, that's a long time. So all, for like 30 years, I can't even believe I can say that. <laughs> that dates me so terribly. Um, so for the last 30 years, anytime I would go to a house that had an animal, uh, had a pet, I was basically, you know, SOL. I was going to have an asthma attack. I was going to have allergies. Um, you know, and usually in these situations, you know, it's like, why don't you take like allergy medicine or, you know, take things with you? At that point in time, 30 years ago, the allergy medicines that we have now weren't as readily as available back then 20 years ago. So there was no like real reliant medication. There were, were no, um, you know, Allegra's at that point or what? the other allergy medicines i think they had like flonase at that time is, is what i remember but all i can remember is having to go and have a, a butyrol treatment and then being on prednisone for like two weeks afterwards which is really funny because one time it was like i did that like after christmas and then I had to go back and visit my parents for something in January. So it was like I was just out of the hospital. I went to visit and then boom, I like had another attack back to back. It was terrible. So let's get to the point, right? So how did I manifest a cat that I live with right now with all of that history and a belief system that says you will never be able to own a cat or a pet for that matter? You know, unless it was like a bird or a hamster, <laughs> you know, other than that, like that wasn't going to happen for me and for a really long time. That's what I thought, but that's just never going to happen for me. I'm not going to be able to be able to do that. Um, so long story short, my son moves out. He gets a cat and, you know, I'm the first one over there buying him toys and treats and playing on the floor with him with little strings and fake mice, <laughs> and he's the, you know, most adorbs kitten I've ever seen in my entire life, we got him from the SPCA, it was like literal magic, we walked in, I saw his face, there was like an immediate connection, of course, he had the most beautiful green eyes I'd ever seen in my entire life, you know, the type that goes, you know, allows you to take pause and just be like, do cats really have that color green in their eyes wow you know striking beautiful he was friendly um he let us hold him we were just like this is the cat we're taking him home so we dropped him off at my son's house i came to visit and it started it was like flashbacks <laughs> it was almost like ptsd it was like the whole thing started up again every time i would go to my son's house <gasps> you know and um ugh, it was it was hard i would have to go home i'd have to have um, you know, my albuterol treatments, I kept prednisone in my bedside table because I knew, right? Because I knew because my brain was programmed to know, if you will, or to think that this was going to happen. So that's how I, I, I went on for like the last two years. So you have to understand I, how much I really adore cats and just want to snuggle them all the time. I watch cat videos, <laughs> especially like on TikTok. I love the cat videos on TikTok. I'll watch them on Facebook too. If they, one comes across my page, I'm in. Like I'm a sucker for, you know, really cute cat videos. Um, so 
I watched them anyway, right? But once I learned that my son had to move back in temporarily and he was going to bring his cat, I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, I freaked out. Like, now it's going to be in my house. Like, my house (sighs) was perfectly clean. No dander, nothing. No pets. I had nothing. Nobody. Um, But if you're a parent, you know, you know. You know, if your son's or your daughter's coming back and they want to move back in, um, you know, save some money and they have a pet, you're, you're going to make accommodations. You're going to make accommodations. You're going to make it work. I have my bedroom set up. No cats are allowed in there. So it's kind of like a safe sanctuary. Um, but he would have, you know, kind of rest the rest of the roaming abilities to do throughout the house. And um, he's really shy. So he doesn't really leave my son's bedroom that much anyway so I figured it's not going to be a big deal right well (laughs) it wasn't so I prepared this is how we did it I prepared and this is how we manifested before I had like about three months notice so my son gave me about three months notice and during that time I started moving energy And I started using creative manifesting mindsets in order to kind of really, number one, heal the trauma. So for the three months prior, I was working with my energy and figuring out where are these allergies coming from and doing some point of creation work and releasing some of the trauma, that childhood trauma that was stuck and trapped in my body out of my system so I did a lot of trauma work I went and saw an acupuncturist and she would desensitize me to cat allergies we must have done like done that like four or five times um but we were doing that at the same time but as we were doing all the clearing and the healing work I was doing all the manifesting work as well right I was still on TikTok watching all the cat videos you know, and that, that just kind of raises your vibration, right? Because you're like, oh, that feels so good. They're so cute. I love the cute little kitty cats, <laughs> right? And you're in this kind of high vibe motion or, or way of being. And then I think I'm getting my timing wrong because I was doing all of this before. So before he moved in, it was before I even knew he moved in. It was like a month before we were doing childhood stuff. But I'm getting the timing kind of messed up, but you'll you'll figure it out. So I'm doing the trauma release. I'm doing all of the energy work. I'm doing the manifesting work. And I'm just imagining um, his cat. So here's the thing. When they tell you that you need to shift your vibration when you're hitting a low, right? One of the tools that they ask you to do or they, you know, invite you to do is to think of something that raises your vibration instantly. So if you're having a negative day and you realize, oh, I'm having a negative day, you want to go to a thing, tool, that can snap you out of it like this, right? A lot of people think about their children. A lot of people think about, you know, specific things that they want to create or their family or, you know, whatever. Mine was my son's cat. (laughs) All I had to do was think about his little face, watch a little video on my phone, and I would go from mm, to mm, right in a minute. It would change your vibration. It would change your frequency immediately. And then I'd sit there and, you know, you dream a little bit about your cat. He's coming over. I can't wait. You know, all of this stuff. All of that is opening flow and creating manifesting energy. So you got the cat videos, you got the, you know, thinking about the cat, you've got the, you know, high vibe cat stuff, you're daydreaming about the cat and, you know, you love the cat and, you know, it's, you know, you really want a pet and you're watching all the videos, right? All of those types of things. You can see how like my energy goes up when I talk about that. All about all of those things is what keeps momentum building. It keeps the attraction factor on fire, right? But why would it take, I think it was like four to six months for all that to fall into place? And it took that long because I have a belief system, or I had a belief system anyway, that I was definitely allergic to cats, 
that I always get sick when they come over. I'm always in the ER. My face just, you know, is just like, bleh, you know, leaking from every orifice and I get sick, right? I'm sick. And that was a traumatic response, even physiologically, to that five, six year old's experience, right? So here I am, 40, Five years later, faced with the idea of having a cat come and live in my house, and I'm doing all this work, and I'm manifesting accidentally. This is what happens when you manifest accidentally without purpose. I wasn't intentionally manifesting a cat. I wasn't intentionally um, manifesting my son's cat. I was just enjoying cat videos, and I've always wanted a pet, and I never was able to have a pet of my own. Because of that trauma, I spent time releasing the trauma, doing the acupuncture and the desensitization. I went to my um, family doctor who gave me, um, what did she give me? She gave me Flovent, which is a stero, sterocortisone. I don't know what it is. It's an inhaler, a special inhaler that you take for long term. It's not like a rescue inhaler. It's like a long term um, cortisone. I think it's cortisone based inhaler. And then I took um, either Allegra or Nasacort for the allergies, right? When I heard he was coming in. But the funny part is three days before my son called and said, look, I, I need to move back home. I want to save money, blah, 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 blah. I had a dream. As I'm doing all this manifesting and thinking of the cat and raising my vibration and keeping the flow, flow open to the possibility of a pet, but it was unintentional. I wasn't intending on creating or manifesting a pet. It was just the cat was just giving me good vibes. So he became my high rise, high vibe um, go to. Right. So it's accidentally no attachment to having a pet. Right. Because if you're not. It, you know, I'm not purposely manifest. So I, I have no attachment to the outcome. I'm just, you know, flowing with the vibes, right? So when that phone call came in, I need to move in with my cat. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little funk there. So I dreamt three days before, which is kind of a weird dream. I dreamt that if I were dying, this is how this dream was, it's crazy. If I were dying, one of the things that I would love to have would be all of my children under my roof all at the same time and living with me for the last year that I would have on the planet. That would be like one of the things. So I hope I'm not dying. I hope I'm not, I'm not dying and this is what we're manifesting. But, um, but everybody move in, including my son and his cat. And then three days later, he calls me and he's like, I need to move in. I'm, I'm coming back and I'm bringing my cat. OK, so I knew that it was coming. But the idea behind it is two things. You can release the trauma that you've had in childhood that causes you to believe certain things like you can't have a cat. You can reprogram and repattern those belief systems. You can start manifesting accidentally in my case and purposely. You can start manifesting the things that you want by dreaming about them, by daydreaming, by thinking about them, by just holding that energy of how it feels in your energy fields, right? So how does it feel to, for me, have a cat? Well, you know, that just immediately takes my vibration to the ceiling, right? When you keep doing that and you do that on a regular basis, watching cat videos, thinking about the cats, daydreaming about the cats, what you're saying to the universe is, I want a pet. I want this cat. I want him to, I want a pet and I want this cat. How are we going to make this happen? And since I had no attachment because I wasn't really manifesting that cat to come live with me, I was just manifesting, um, accidentally, you know, just good vibes and the good vibes were cats. Um, you know, you're opening that flow, you're creating a momentum, you know, it's like cats, momentum, cats, cats, and it didn't matter, it didn't have to be his cat, it was just cats in general, like cute cats on TikTok, if you ever watch those, I mean, they're like, so super cute, um, so how does that not raise your, your frequency, 
but it keeps you, you know, that momentum going when you're, when you're feeling down, you watch some cat videos, like, yeah, I'm back, you know? Um, so I was doing that for about four months because it made me feel good. Not because I was manifesting a cat, right? So to learn that my son was going to move back in with his cat was like, a oh, there we are. <laughs> it was, it was like a big surprise and like really caused me pause to go, how did we do that? Right? How did we do that? Because I still had that past trauma in regards to animals, right? So I started doing the work. I had, I was fortunate to have a three month window where he was like, I'll be moving in after Christmas, right? So the new year. So it was like, I don't know, October. So I had time to start doing the work, to start doing the clearing, start doing the healing, start doing the manifesting, start doing all of the things, right? See the acupuncturist, um, go to the doctor. So long story short, <laughs> actually, this is a long story, even longer. Um, the cat lives with me. He's lived with me for now five months. I have not had to go to the ER once. Um, I have allergies, but they're managed with new medications, right? So you can do like Allegra D every day or Nasacort. I find that Nasacort works better for me um, than Allegra D, but it's a nasal inhaler and some people don't like that. And sometimes it's like, oh, I can light up your brain, um, which is not very comfortable, but it works. I have a flow vent inhaler to manage my asthma. And I have not had an asthma attack or a really bad allergy attack that wasn't managed by medication since. And he's been here for five years now under five years, five months. Um, so understand, though, however, you know, it's not like super magic. When I knew that he was coming, I also did some other preparations, right? So I ordered like air purifiers to make sure cat hair was, you know, being sucked in by the air purifiers. I closed off a specific room so I had a safe space to be if I thought I was going to have any difficulty. Um, you know, I pet lint. I mean, everybody has a lint brush, but I have a lint brush, not specifically for my clothes. It's, um, I use it to, um, wipe off furniture because I don't want to be sitting in, um, cat hair or dander where he's been. Um, just, you know, little things like that we started doing in the beginning. Now we don't do like half of that, but in the beginning, we were very, very meticulous because if it wasn't going to work, we needed to move very quickly and readapt. But now it works. Now it works. Between the between the trauma release and then shifting my mindset, literally, and stop saying that things like, I can never have a pet, right? That worked for about 40 years. And now it's like, no, I can have a pet. You know, am I allergic to it? Yeah, I'm, I have some, you know, physiological reactions, but they're medicated. You know, I'm I'm able to medicate myself to a point where um, I don't have allergies. I don't have asthma. I'm not dying from the cat being in my house 24-7. Whereas when I would walk into somebody else's house, you know, within an hour, I would just be like, eh, forget it. Um, so there, you know, you make adjustments to that but I think the really important piece was that I'm trying to get to when you do and work with your own manifestations is where are you blocking yourself with thoughts like I had like I could never have a cat right where are you blocking yourself with thoughts of I can never have blank right where is that coming from? Is that stemming from five to six year old trauma of riding your tricycle down the block, chasing your mother, or, you know, down the block because she's giving away your cat and you're like crying and having a panic attack at five? You know, where is your point of creation? What has created that belief system for you? Can you clear it and heal it? And can you remove the mindset thought process of I can never instead of changing that and start opening up to possibility 
right? I really thought in my lifetime, the one animal I would never be able to have or own or be in the presence of for more than an hour was a cat. Those suckers just like would literally put me in the hospital. And so based on those experiences, each time I would go to someone's house, I would literally be like, I could never have that in my house. I couldn't create an area um, or an environment of like that in my home. And instead, I went from how, how can we do this? So instead of I can never, the question then became, how can I? He's coming home. He's bringing his cat. What can I do in order to change the way that I respond to these poor little animals that makes it possible for me to live with this animal? And granted, it was a lot of a lot of different things, you know, it was air purifiers. It was, um, you know, allergy medications. It was acupuncture for desensitization of cat allergens, mostly dander. And it was clearing that post-traumatic little T trauma from when I was five years old, um, which set the tone, set the whole forward motion of you will never be able to have a cat because this is what happened when you were five. So unraveling that and healing that and then finding solutions instead of problems and then manifesting it again, accidentally manifesting it by thinking about the cat, feeling into the cat, right? Watching the cat videos. All of that adds to your vibration and increases your momentum for your manifestation. And during that time, again, I had no idea my son was going to be moving in. I was just enjoying cats and I was just enjoying my son's cat, you know? Um, so it was just one of those aha moments of, you know, I went from no cats ever to literally, he's over there, literally living with a cat. I wonder if I can like show it to you, show them to you. I don't think you can, no, I don't think you can flip the camera on a live. Oh wait, you can. Can, will you be able to see him? I don't know. Let's see. Can you see him? Oh, no, he's too far away. Oh, wait, maybe. Hang on. He's, there he is. That's the culprit. That is the cat culprit. <laughs> you know, he, he's so cute. He sits in that window and he watches the world. Without a care in the world, um, you know, I, I understand and learn uh, a thing about what they call zoomies. I never had an animal that had zoomies before. Um, so it's been like a really interesting um, experience <laughs> living with an animal again after 40 years of not being able to or to think, think, right, to think that I would never be able to live with an animal again. Um, having a pet has just been such, um, a great experience. And of course, don't get me wrong. I love having my son home too, <laughs> but his cat is super cute. <laughs> so that's really, um, you know, understanding, oops, understanding and learning. How can you manifest things that you think you can't have? Right. Is there trauma? Is there trauma that set the tone for where you are now? Heal it. Is there a belief system that came out of that trauma? Is there something that you then believed about yourself because of that trauma that you still believe today? So five years old, the whole thing. This is what happened at five. This is what I thought the rest of my life was going to look like. And I went through the rest of my life with this belief system. And then can you change it? Yes. How do we change it? You have to start asking different questions, right? And as I started asking these different questions, how am I going to move in with this cat? What am I going to do? Um, what if it doesn't work out? The whole thing. What am I going to do about that? 
as I started asking those questions, solutions started rolling in. I was able to see a doctor who could give me uh, better guidance on how to manage my allergies. There's absolutely brand new medications on the market that are, um, you know, much more helpful than some of the interventions I was using. So I got new medications. I bought air purifiers, not available 25 years ago. Um, you know, so I have like one in every room. Cost me a million dollars in filters, but what can you do? Um, and I, I have pictures. I show you here. The cat sits on my lap. I mean, that is like the biggest, you know, outcome you can ever experience is not only do I have a cat that lives in the house with me, but he likes me and he sits on my lap and he lets me pet him. I mean, five years, not even five years ago, last year, last year, that wasn't even an option for me. Wasn't even an option because I would, I would get so sick, but now it is. So we change things when we decide to look at it differently. When we heal the little T, the little trauma that happens when we're five or six that we carry with us, that created belief systems that were false. And when we unravel them and we move forward and we think of a new way of thinking, we have new experiences, we look at old experiences from a new perspective, things start to shift and change, right? I was guided to go to an acupuncture session. My acupuncturist happened to be um, learned, learned, educated in um, allergy desensitization, right? So you follow all the little synchronicities until you get to the big manifestation, which is a cat in my house. <laughs> but the idea behind it and the reason why that I think that happened within that small period of time, I mean, four months for something like that, four or five months, even six months, you know, to have something like that happen is a very small amount of time. And I think the reason why it came so fast in such a small, short amount of time is because I had no attachment to a cat living with me, right? I wasn't going to shelters every weekend. I was looking on their websites, but I wasn't going to the shelters because in my head, I wasn't really buying a cat. It was just nice to look at because it raised my vibration. But ultimately what happened is I was unconsciously manifesting a cat. <laughs> now we didn't know what kind of cat it was going to be, right? But it came in with my, with my son. And so because I was not attached to the outcome, right? It's like, I have to have it, I have to have it, I have to have it now, right? And you're just like putting all this forceful energy against it. I had no attachment, like literally zero attachment, because in my mind, it was like, ah, you know, I can't take that risk. I don't want to send it back to the shelter. So with zero attachment, it was able to come in faster. Everything was able to kind of weave itself in a way in which it can get to me like whoo, super fast. So when I tell you, be very, very clear <laughs> about what you want when you're manifesting. This is part of the reason why you want to be super clear with the universe as to what it is that you're manifesting, because you can accidentally manifest a cat <laughs> or anything else in your experience if you're not really um, aware and focused on what it is that you actually do want. So. That is my story about how I manifested a cat with um, terrible allergies and asthma and overcoming childhood trauma, little trauma, and um, mindsets and belief systems and really kind of um, working with the, the universe in that way, working with energy in that way and how it all comes together and how it all just kind of, you know, is really an interesting process. Um, and that's, and that's how I have a cat. And I haven't been to the ER since. And, you know, I haven't had any, I mean, look, I don't know allergies. <laughs> um, so, you know, for yourselves, keep that in mind that even with, even with little trauma, these things can still be healed. You have to then change the belief system that that little trauma created and start asking different questions and then start manifesting what you want. 
it's the whole process. This is kind of like a really good encapsulation of everything that I do. We heal that trauma, we change the mindset and and what that mindset created or what that trauma created in your mind, your thoughts and how you feel. And then we work on manifesting things without attachment and keeping your vibration high. I mean, if there was any other example that could explain what I do, this is it. This is it. It's from example. It's healing. It's healing mindset work and manifestation. And, you know, I'm living proof that this is how not only I do my work, but this is how my work affects me. I use it every day in my life. Um, and I have the tools to be able to process the things that come up. Um, if you don't have those things, or maybe you haven't even started on the healing process or the mindset or manifest manifesting is kind of difficult for you. Um, there are two programs right now that we're offering that you can just simply jump into. One is our sovereign circle membership program. It's a monthly program where we meet twice a month, uh, live to actually do some group energy work and activations to kind of help realign our energy and release some trauma and do some healing, do a little bit of everything in there, depending upon, you know, who shows up and what is needed. Uh, we do that twice a month and there's total bonuses. Like there's free access to the Academy when you become a sovereign member and the Academy is loaded with 20 courses and almost 200 MP3 and MP4 files for you to work with while you're going in between the monthly sessions of the sovereign circle. Plus, you get the shifting into higher dis um, consciousness discourses, which talks about who you really are, how your energy works, and tips and tools on how to work with things like your teams and your guides and your body and your electrical and magnetic energy fields. Uh, all of that is in there as well. Plus, we do something that nobody else does, and I'm kind of proud of this. Um, you know, when you join the circle, you not only get to rewatch the videos uh, of the sessions, but you get to review every single Sovereign Circle call or session we've done since. So you could join today, and I think there's like four sessions we've already done. You can have access to those and work with those as well. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of like, benefits you know membership has this benefits when you're a member you get to have access to all the things right all the things that are going to help you heal align manifest and change your belief system that's our thing so if you'd like to be in our circle circle has a whole bunch of other stuff bonuses that go with it i just don't know what they are off the top of my head you can ask me for a link not a problem um, the other one right now that we're offering is um, is going to be a 10 day event called Unshackled. And I really love this one. Unshackled is all about all the projections other people have placed on you, how you think that they belong to you, how you think that they're yours how you've been functioning from them for years and years and years and how other people's expectations, not just family, but society as a whole has shaped your process of thought, has dampened your unique authenticity and how basically you've become a prisoner to those expectations, expectations based on what a society of culture Maybe it's religion, maybe it's some other entity that um, places on you, on how you should act, how you should behave, how you should dress, how you should be a parent, how you should be in the workforce, right? All of those rules that society places on and around you, we're unshackling from. There are imprisonments, there are ways in which to keep you um, in, a, in a state of conformity conforming to the norms, right? When you weren't meant to be normal, you were meant to be, you know, a breakout individual and unique individual living in your own true, authentic way, following your own intuition, your own path and your own journey, and not really having to be a part of this, you know, society. And, and 
and and be in it at the same time you're you're trailblazers you're there's another word for it pathfinders no it says it's like path i can't remember anyway you're leading the forefront um your leaders you're leading the forefront out of the societal expectation of what other people expect you to be um and we are literally energetically unshackling ourselves from that and calling back all of our power and moving into this energy of just super total alignment with your own truth and your own way of being that you don't have to conform anymore. Um, Unshackled starts May 15th, I think, to the 22nd. And that's all the details that I could drop for you right now. Sorry. Um, most of them will drop completely because it is kind of a secret. I'm really bad at secrets. I probably shouldn't even told you that. But um, <laughs> that will drop. Um, it actually is dropped. It's dropped. It's here and it's available. It's um, two, $222. It will go up uh, on Friday to 333 And then it will go up one more time till it hits its full price value. Um, of around 444, 555. That's where we're going. Um, I think 555 is the um, full price. Um, but I don't, I don't know if I'm going to go that high. We'll see. I, I'm very intuitive in that way myself. So those are the two ways you can get in and play with us. If you're not ready for that, please feel free to visit my website at elizabethpfeiffer.com and head on into the vault or into any of our signature programs. They're all DIY um, materials that you can start working with now. They're just download and go. Um, so feel free to head on over there. But if you really want a really big, powerful, oh my FG um, experience, join us in the Sovereign Circle. That's really where you want to be. Because at the end of each circle, I'm able to open the calls, take your questions, and do additional work with you. Um, there right there live on the call um, we have a very nice intimate group right now um, but as we move forward we're not going to be able to open those calls you know you can't open a call when you have like 100 people on the line but um, we can right now so feel free to jump in it's an easy subscribe and unsubscribe there is we're not holding you prisoner right you're unshackled um, so you know if you when you feel complete you just hit a button and you're out when you feel like you need to come in and um, do a little bit more work you hit the button and you're in that's just kind of how we work so ask me any questions below um tag me if you need more information or links we're happy to be able to supply that for you uh, aside from that have a fantastic day i hope you found that this little master class um experience was helpful to you make you think about some of the ways in which your past childhood traumas might be affecting you now how they might be you know, impacting you in your thoughts and in your feelings and um, how your mindset can shift on a dime when you choose and how the momentum of manifestation is a real thing and it can really bring you the things you want as long as you are clear. <laughs> All right, you guys, have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.